Hey guys, Mike here with Jeeps on the Run. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about the Jeep Wrangler. Did you know the Jeep Wrangler technically wasn't born till 1987? Did you know how Jeep got its name? Did you know that the Jeep Wrangler skipped a model year in production? Stick around, let's talk about some fun facts of the Jeep Wrangler. 1941 Willys MB, military Jeep as we would call it today. Uh, it was kind of what started the whole platform. Willys, uh, Ford had their, their hands in it, Kaiser had their hands in it. Later, the name Jeep was, was trademarked by Willys Corporation. Now, how did the name Jeep become to be? Vehicles were called the general purpose. So they were, they were called the GP, which then evolved into Jeep. So that acronym GP is the rumor that we understand as to how Jeep got its name. They spelled it J-E-E-P, but it was pronounced Jeep, uh, known as general purpose. After the war, after everything, the, these military vehicles were, were highly sought after. People loved them. The CJ was born. The CJ was known as the civilian Jeep. So if you own a CJ, that's where the term came for civilian Jeep after the MB and military Jeep vehicles, which we knew previous. The CJ2A was the first Jeep to, to sport the seven slot grille, which we still have today moving into 2024. CJ2A all the way up to CJ7 and even the CJ8s uh, is what we know for the Wrangler today, but they were not called a Wrangler back then. In fact, they weren't technically called a Wrangler until 1986 and in 1987, depending on how you want to talk about whether it was build year or model year. So from 1945 to 1985, like we talked about, Kaiser Willys uh, finally sold off to AMC, American Motor Company. And, and that is when the, the Jeep Wrangler was born under the AMC name. We should keep in mind, it wasn't until the late 60s and into the 70s that the CJs were household vehicles and they were daily drivers. So we had almost 30 years uh, before these vehicles were found in daily homes and just as used as daily drivers. So when was the first Wrangler? So in 1986, they started building the first Wrangler, no, the first Jeep known as a Wrangler. It kicked off in 1986 for a 1997 model year. As you should know, it was the first Wrangler with square headlights. It's said today that it's the only Wrangler and it was the first and it was the last. If you think about it, it obviously was the first Wrangler, but even the Jeeps prior to it all had the good old round headlights that we know today. So from 1986 to 1995, the Wrangler start was born with square headlights. Let's talk about the name Wrangler. I find this kind of interesting. So Wrangler, as we know, Goodyear Wrangler tires, they were, uh, Jeep reached out to Wrangler tires and said, hey, we're making this Jeep. Wrangler said, okay. Maybe that was an agreement as to why the Wrangler tires were found on so many of the Jeep vehicles forever. I would have to imagine that wasn't coincidence, uh, but Wrangler jeans made by Levi. I guess they didn't think well enough to ask Levi Jean Corporation, can we make the Wrangler? So Levi's actually sued Jeep and Jeep didn't care. They kept pushing forward with the Wrangler brand uh, model. And uh, after many years, it's my understanding that Wrangler Jeans, Levi Corporation just said, this is frivolous. Let's just let it go. My opinion, kudos to Wrangler uh, Jeans. You had an awesome vehicle named after your, your clothing line or clothing model, whatever you want to call it. So probably a nice decision just to let it go. So in 1987, AMC was purchased by Chrysler. That's when you start to see the Daimler Chrysler uh, push into the vehicle and the YJ uh, starts getting some different things. They had a 2.5 liter motor and a 2.5 or 4.2 is carbureted. As we move forward, we'll talk about some of the, the progression that the YJ made. Um, but this is where we start moving into Chrysler and, and what we know it as today. I think it was 1992, uh, the vehicle became uh, electronically fuel injected. In 93, they added uh, ABS. And in 92 also, I want to say the, the roll bar on the Wrangler was what they call a family cage. It actually came up and came around the back seats versus just uh, down and your head would actually poke up on uh, what would protect you from the roll bar versus going around you. So they actually thought about your passengers at that point. Um, but the YJ was spring leaf spring suspension. It still had the, the gauges that went across the bottom of the dash, not quite as utilitarian as the CJ, but certainly on that line. 1994, the YJ gets an automatic transmission. This is the first automatic transmission in a Jeep Wrangler. 
Yes, they did have a three-speed automatic transmission in the CJ, but this is the first time that transmission was offered in the Wrangler. So that was the beginning of, to what some people might say, the end of that transmission. Uh, moving into 2024, we'll talk about that in a minute, but how much longer will the automatic transmission, will the manual transmission be available? We don't know, but I have a feeling it's not gonna be for as long as we'd hope. So 1996, what happened? Manufacturer retooled, the TJ's being born, coil sprung suspension from the XJ, which we know, the dash changes. Here's a fun tip. Ask your Jeep friends, tell them you've got a 96 Wrangler, see what they say. There's no such thing. There's no such thing as a 96 Wrangler. Yes, they made Wranglers in 96. They produced them. Some of them have a build date of 1996, but there was never a model year 96 Jeep Wrangler. If you go to AutoZone and you spin somebody out, tell them you've got a 96 Wrangler. You don't have one. You may have one built then, but this was the kickoff to the TJ. So yes, while you could still buy a Jeep Wrangler in 1996, it was a TJ, but it was a model year 97. They kicked it off early to put this thing on the road. Now, the TJ is born. The Jeep family, the Jeep enthusiasts we come unglued, right? We've got coil suspension. We've got a, 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 a gauge cluster that looks like a normal car. We've got HVAC controls that look like a normal car. Everything's changing. We're all getting upset because what happened to my utilitarian Jeep Wrangler? Where, where did we go wrong in this TJ? But it was awesome. It had great, better off-roading capabilities. It had more travel suspension. Everything about it, we loved after the fact, right? You really start to see the Chrysler shine through. You really start to see the HVAC controls. You start to see the gauge clusters. You see, really start to see that Chrysler branding pushing through. You see that in the TJ. The TJ was a great vehicle. Moving forward later in the TJ, we had the LJ. If you have an LJ Rubicon, save it. It's a unicorn and I hope it's in good shape because that's gonna be worth a ton of money. Speaking of Rubicon, in 2003, the Rubicon is born. Jeep listens to the community. They realize we wanna off-road this. They give us locking differentials. They give us uh, sway bar disconnects. You know, they, they give us things, different gear ratios, crawl ratios. They give us these things that we off-roaders want and they're listening to us. To this day, we just talked about the, the new, the, the 20th anniversary of the, of the Rubicon. Can you believe it's been 20 years? Uh, but we also have, now you can buy, in 2024, you can get from factory, a winch, from factory. That only took them 30 plus years to figure that out, but they listen, the Jeep listens to their consumers. But we're gonna talk about where Jeep's going. So 2003, the Rubicon's born. 2004 is the LJ. It's the longer version of a TJ, and then the LJ Rubicon they have. Again, unicorn. If you got it, save it, put it in a glass box. But is this the start of the four-door? Is this extended body the start of what goes into the JKU, or which is known as the JK Wrangler Unlimited? Maybe. So in 2007, the JK comes out, and it has a four-door option. A four-door Wrangler. So now you have increased your audience. Now you have, the soccer moms, you have the families, you have the people that maybe that two-door Wrangler didn't make sense, but it does now because you can put the wife and kids and you can pack the whole family in there and everyone can come with. So did this change? Was this the shift? Was this why we went to more selling more automatics than manual? When I bought my TJ in 1998, if it didn't have a manual transmission, I didn't even, I didn't even look at the window sticker. I didn't care, I didn't want one. When we bought our 2007 JK, JKU, it was the same thing. If it wasn't manual transmission, I didn't want it. Fast forward till now, if you see a manual transmission Jeep, you're the rare guy now, you're the guy out. Where, are you, where do you fall in this? Are you a manual trans, auto, man, auto trans? Is it a real Jeep that doesn't have an automatic or doesn't have manual? What's your comment? Remember in 2007 when the JKU came out also, the Hummer's the craze, right? All these huge SUVs. So did, did Jeep put out this four door to compete with these other large SUVs on the road? Perhaps. Was it something they needed? I think so. I think it I think it was a huge win for them. I think they certainly opened the market like we just talked about to a huge uh, broad audience. And they still offer the two, two door, which if you're the guy who just wants to wheel it and you want something smaller to wheel, maybe that's your option. If you're the guy who wants a four door because it's a better ride on road, Sometimes the longer wheelbase is better off-road. Depends on your scenario. But now you have the option. So the 2007 was really the kickoff to a whole new ball of wax with the Wrangler. So again, just like the shift from the YJ to the TJ, 
People were resistant. They didn't want this new fancy dash. They didn't want this one key. They didn't want the HVAC controls all. They wanted that utilitarian, right? Well, we got used to the TJ. And then the JK comes out and it's, it's similar. It's, I would say it's less of a jump from the YJ to the TJ, but it's, it's still, there is a, there is a, a jump there in some, in some features, right? But I think the biggest change is you have four doors now. Otherwise, I would say, generally speaking, the gas, the dash setup is refined and you have, you know, now you have power windows, I suppose, what you didn't have on the Jake, on the, on the TJ. So that's, that's a little different, but overall there was no major uh, changes, maybe some things that people actually liked. Power windows on a four-door Wrangler, that's, that's a positive. Cranking a, a four-door Wrangler behind you, eh, that kind of sucks. So I get that. So from the JK to the JL, now it's, is, it, is that more of the jump we had from the YJ to the TJ? I kind of think so. You get the heated seats, you get the heated steering wheel, you get the keyless entry and the, and the key fob and the proximity door handles, and you, you get more of these creature features, right, in the JL. So we kind of had this uproar again, like, oh, it's not a real Jeep, it's got push button start, it's got this, it's got that, you know. They start to kick the windshield back a little more, right? It gets a little more aerodynamic, a little quieter, a little, little quieter ride. We get an eight-speed transmission, a little more refined there, right? They're just, they're polishing it. But are they polishing it for the person who drives it every day? Or are they polishing it for the off-roader? Is the off-roader still the bulk of the market or is it the daily driver? I don't know. I kind of think it's a daily driver, unfortunately, right? We don't have as many places to wheel as we used to. Uh, that hobby is, it's hard, it's hard to fulfill that hobby. But it's definitely hard to fulfill that hobby when you're trying to wheel a $70,000 Wrangler where you could have wheeled a $19,000 Wrangler in the past. I get it, it's all relative. But let's talk about where Jeep is going and, and where we've come. I've got my window stickers from my first Wrangler I've ever purchased in 1998 to my last one I've purchased just a few years ago in 01. So we're gonna talk a little bit about what has changed and some of this stuff is kind of interesting. So uh, let's dig in here. 1998 TJ Sport. I'll post these up if you wanna see them later, you can pause the video and look a little deeper. Base price, $17,505. So a TJ Sport, you could get one for a little over $17,000. This one that I purchased ended at $21,500, had a hard top. And some of these features are almost kind of funny. A center console, it's got a 600 amp maintenance free uh, battery, 117 amp alternator. You know, we're talking tires. This was, wasn't even the smallest tires for that matter. 215, 75R15s, all terrains. 215s, I mean, these are like, these are donuts. But again, 21,560. The next Jeep I own, a 2006 Wrangler X. Kind of similar to a sport with options, so it's apples to apples for the most part. 22,660, 21.5 to 22.6, so a thousand dollar upgrade from 98 to 06. I don't think that's horrible. Full metal doors with roll up windows was an option of $125. Do you know what the full metal doors are now? Holy cow. So again, this one goes to $22,600. So in 2006, we go to a 2008 Wrangler X, same package. So we go from 22.6 to 26.3. Okay. So 2008, 26.3, we go to a 2015 Wrangler Unlimited Sport to 34.1. Again, I'll post these, you can look at them. Similar package, Sport X, apples, apples. So $34,100. So from 2015 to 2017, now we jump to a Sahara. But window sticker on this is 42, just call it 42 even. So 2017, 2018, we go from 42 to 47 one. Again, now these are both Sahara. This was also JK to JL. My JK goes from 42 to my JL 47. So we, we jump model year by one model year, but also a, a new model. So 2018 was 47 one. And then I jump from 2018, 47, 1,000 to 2021. So 47 to $59,000. Now I get it, this is the 4xE high altitude, but $60,000 Wrangler. And now moving forward, if you purchase a 20th anniversary and you do the AEV conversion, you could be over, over $100,000 and the 392 is gonna be right there too. And now moving into 2024, we get power seats, heated and cooled seats, 
we get lane keep assist, we get automatic braking, we're gonna get automatic wipers, we're gonna get automatic headlights, we're gonna get all these things. So we went from $21,000 to over $70,000. The first one having, <clears throat> you know, go back to a YJ, the first one having two keys, manual everything, probably in the teens to now, if you want, over $100,000. What is your thought on the Wrangler? Do you feel that the Wrangler should be the utilitarian vehicle it was? Should we go back to what it was? Or do you like where it's going? I personally could never spend $70,000 on a vehicle and go bang it around off trees. Now, if money was no object and I had it to burn, sure. And, and if that's your situation, hats off to you. I would say the general public doesn't buy a $70,000 Wrangler to wheel it. So what are your thoughts? What, would you, what are the options you would rather see? And let's talk about the manual transmission. Would you rather have a manual transmission? Would you rather have an automatic transmission? Will you be sad if the manual transmission goes away? Rumor is the manual transmission in the Wrangler is going to disappear. So we're gonna talk about that in another video. Check out our video talking about the 2024 Wrangler. But there's a little history of, of how Jeep became and where we've come and where we're going. So, hey, as always, I hope you made it through the video. I hope you like and subscribe and please let us know what you think. Uh, comment below and um, check us out on Facebook. We've got a great, awesome Jeep family at Jeeps on the Run uh, or JeepsOnTheRun.com. So we'll see you at our next adventure.